Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to try to fly the PMDG 737-600 from Warsaw and that is EPWA, Chopin International Airport, to Amritsar in India and this is obviously not a real life flight that would have happened as far as I know. Uh, we have it fully fueled with fuel and so you can see the range there and so this is not quite pushing the range but pretty close and it's just sort of a test flight though. I do have sort of a backstory for my own livery for this 737 I did make my own livery. It is a Rays Aerospace Engineering livery and I'll show that to you once we get outside. Uh, but yeah, so I have a little backstory that has us starting in Warsaw. So we'll just go with that. And I guess this will be a regular flight for uh, Rays Aerospace Engineering for some reason. But anyway, we'll try it out on this. There are other long-range flights that I'm going to have to try this out on, and we'll see how that works. I am starting from the ramp. Okay, so here we are in the cold and dark start, and I'm going to get the battery on first. That's just traditional. Yep. There we go. Otherwise, we can't use the FMC, so... Okay, FS Actions, Ground Services, GPU... Uh, GPU cart request and uh, we will need full fuel uh, I don't know if it's cheating if I do that without a fuel cart attached but payload that's fine that's pretty much the max we can take uh, we have gross weight 144.5 max takeoff weight 145 let's take a look outside while the ground power is getting connected so this is the livery, and let me get rid of the checklist for a sec there, oops. And uh, we'll be operating out of Japan, so that's Japanese up there. And we have, well, I mean, we're operating out of Japan, but we'll be doing flights around the world, so it's not like a hub or anything. Uh, it is an Rays Aerospace Research, and as far as the kanji letters that we have up there, the first two letters are Rays, uh, Reizu. Uh, they end up meaning beautiful plan or beautiful diagram, which works for me either way. Uh, the next two characters are for aeronautical. The next two are space, Uchu. So that is like the aeronautical and space for NASA kind of part. And then the last two characters are engineering. So it adds up to raise aeronautical and space engineering. Uh, the tail number 412 is in reference to the first space shuttle mission, STS-1, which launched on April 12th, and also Vostok-1 with Yuri Gagarin launching on April 12th, so seemed convenient. Okay, so with that all said, let's see what we can do here. Alright, um, it looks like ground power is active, let's see. Yes, it says release there now. So, we'll go ground power on. Sounds good. And then we can set the standby power to auto and close that guard. And now we're ready to do things. But the stuff up there... Oh, this DC battery guard can be closed. Okay. That's normal. To switch, hold, fault. And yeah, we get those. And the master caution switch is illuminated. Usually is anyway for me. Uh, hold the overheat fire. Right. Okay, APU is starting. I'm gonna just arm the emergency exit lights. <laughs> Why not? And... We are on APU. Right. Um, APU gen. Okay. So, ground power off. And let's just get the cart away. Okay, so now align, align, that. preliminary flight, EEC switches, we're back there, yes they're on, passenger oxygen, a guard closed, yes, 
passenger oxygen on light extinguished yes landing gear indicator lights up there are fine oh those are flashing now okay nav I mean maybe I'm, I'm too early on this I don't know okay the flight recorder switch guard was closed um, we can test the mock speed and all that business Stall warning test only works on one, by the way. I mean, it says here, often nav. So maybe I should just have gone straight to nav with that. And going to a line was a mistake. I don't know, what's the line for anyway? If Anyway, we'll figure it out. I can fly without any of that, without autopilot or anything. If absolutely necessary. I don't want to, but I can. Feel diff light off. Well, the fuel diff light is off, but the uh, speed trim fail and the mock trim fail are on. And I believe that's because of the IRS still being out of alignment. Okay, VFR, uh, VHF, sorry. That's normal. FMC is normal. IRS is normal. Source selector, auto, control panel, normal. Those lights are illuminated dim. Filter, all those lights are off. The low pressure lights are on. The guards are closed. Galley power switch. I think that was the on position. Standby power guards closed. Standby power off. Generator drive disconnect. Guards closed. Drive lights are illuminated for some reason. Okay, fasten seatbelt auto. Well, the at heading, I mean, it doesn't seem to be showing an attitude indicator, so I'm guessing the inertial navigation system or IRS isn't working. Let's go back to the main menu. FMC, position initialization. I guess that's the right position. Yeah, it's uh, it's got our right position in the position initialization. Okay, but I'll proceed. The window heat was on. Probe heat off. The lights are appropriate. We've got the ram door full open lights on. Pack switches auto or high. Isolation valve is open. Fuel bleed switches are on. APU can have APU bleed and dual bleed is illuminated. The others are off. B41000 and the landing altitude will be 750. All the lights are okay except I'll turn on the anti-collision for when we start the engines. And I'm still gonna go ahead and start the engine. Even though who knows what's going on with the iris and we want the doors closed electric hydraulic pumps irs options alignment time realistic no it's fast apparently well it's not aligning very much uh, so it's 30 seconds maybe i should uh wait 30 seconds here Okay, we can get the air conditioning packs off. Is that okay? I, I don't think it's okay. Maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. Let me just start the engines. It seems different than what I'm used to, but what else is new? Okay, starting left. And I've got to get all the fuel pumps on as well. Okay, idle. Okay, well we've got one on. They're still blinking a line up there. I'll just wait for them. Maybe, maybe they'll work, I don't know. Okay, starting the right engine. Okay, idle on that one. So, okay, generator time. Generator on. 
and on and gen one and APU off APU bleed air switch off probe heat switches on anti-ice and an engine anti-ice we don't need back to auto on the packs isolation valve auto and engines to continuous well I'm gonna click instant here and see if we can that ac expedites anything at all we've got our position set right we've got a reference airport set um, I guess we can pick that up and put that in again oh uh, well that's not our attitude though um, oh, now it's now it's good. Okay, um, I had done that before, picking up the last position and putting it in, but I guess it didn't like it before um, we started that. Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess we had to start the IRS system first and then input the last position in. Okay, just got the order wrong. It looks like. Okay, I think we're okay to go. But finally, <laughs> we probably burned a ton of fuel just waiting around here. Reyes Romeo, Alpha runway 15, huh? to a Ritzer Airport as filed. Take off runway 15 climb and maintain 7,000 feet. Departure on 127 decimal for 5 squawk 7574. Uh, it is set to 7574. But now our thingamajig is not aligned properly. Now it is. I'm confused. Our artificial horizon does not seem to be entirely happy with me. But what does it mean when my artificial horizon is blinking like that? Hmm? That seems suspicious, doesn't it? Okay, uh, let's go for the right. They say re eyes. It's just rays. Re eyes. Maybe I should type it in some sort of phonetic way so they'll pronounce it properly. Okay, you're going too far. Okay, well, uh, hold on there, hold on. Okay, we have our pla our path. My artificial horizon is still blinking. Got a nice Warsaw skyline over there. I think that's probably a freeware add-on, unless I'm mistaken. I don't think they've done photogrammetry, and but unfortunately, it's a bit choppy around here. Random Spitfire there. Uh, I really wish there was a way to modify what planes actually got used for for airports around airports okay three zero zero six and that's set there too okay cleared for takeoff runway one five ray eyes Romeo alpha four one two Okay, here we go at long last. We actually want one more bit of flaps. Okay, off we go. Okay, gear up. Okay. 
So here we are in the air. I still don't know about the flickering on the on the thing there. I think let's just verify. Oh, the yaw damper. Well, now we have the yaw damper. So a look at our plane as we depart Warsaw. I deliberately picked a purplish color for our liveries with Rage's Aerospace because they're uncommon. So I wanted something distinctive. And so, past 30,000 feet, this is how our plucky little 737-600 looks. And we've got some trails. We just kicked in. Well, passenger view. As we continue our ascent. Seems like we're stalling. Okay. Sorry, sorry, it was stalling and everything. Now, we're ignoring all flight restrictions, incidentally, so here we go with Minsk Center. 119 Decimal 125 for Reyes Romeo Alpha 412. Well, I'll tell you, at uh, flight level 410, our operational range as far as speed is concerned is really thin. Oh, okay, okay, we're, we're getting the buffeting. <laughs> and yeah, we're a bit slow. Um, I'm gonna request a lower altitude, frankly. Uh, request cruising altitude decrease by 2,000 feet. Center, Reyes, Romeo, Alpha 412. Request it was just too narrow. Especially with the weather, if it's gonna Reyes, buffet us. Romeo, Alright, so we're at 39,000 feet, our adjusted cruising altitude. We're, we're over Belarus right now. We're right over the border between Belarus and Ukraine. So, perfectly safe, I'm sure. We're going about as fast as we can. Probably about as high as it's safe to do so. Uh... For reasons I don't quite understand, the uh, speed is not being held at 0.78. Maybe the FMS decided that we should be more efficient? I don't know. Yeah, the, the auto throttle is gradually getting slower for some reason, and I'm not sure why, so... Let me just sort of redo that. And I've changed my my panel somehow. Uh, I know about these styles, but uh, they don't seem to give me the same mold configuration. So I am off of auto throttle. And I should probably turn a bit though. And we are approaching the Ukrainian border. I clicked something else. Whenever I look at the map, I click something that I'm not supposed to click. Nobody's contacted me. Nobody cares about my existence anymore. But here we are. It's probably safer that way though. So we are currently over Belarus and crossing over into Ukraine. That's when we pass that river. That should be the Dnieper River, which also passes through Kiev. And so we see the there's a lake there, and then just south of that lake is Kiev. Passenger view at this point. Yep, we've got some instability. Okay, well we are right on track for Lumat, which is apparently right on the Ukrainian and Russian border. Uh, no political implications intended here.
I think I've got the Altral doing what I wanted it to do. All right. So that's good. Uh, not that I was having any trouble keeping the throttle where it needed to be, but just figuring some things out with the FMC and all. Alright, well, progress report. Uh, it looks like I have managed to somewhat enter my course into the FMC after the fact, uh, though because I didn't do it properly, it's still reading a distance to Warsaw back there. Uh, that's the 547 nautical miles, but it's got our course more or less in there, and so we've got the pinkish purple line that we can follow. So, we've got a long way to go yet though, we're only 552 nautical miles from Warsaw, so we've got a, f a number of hours, a number of hours to go. Okay, progress report time. This is the Volga River and we are headed towards the Caspian Sea, so this is the outflow of the Volga River. And so we should probably be approaching Astrakhan pretty soon. And taking a look inside, we are holding at Mach 0.78 as desired. And we have a serious tailwind. We have an 83 knot tailwind pushing us, so that's helpful. And we should probably lean a little bit further this way. So everything looking good so far. We are about 1,080 nautical miles from Warsaw. And so a little bit less than halfway through the flight. And uh, we're doing very well on fuel. So there is that. Still holding at 39,000 feet. So yeah, the Volga River seriously branches out as it approaches the Caspian Sea. I guess uh, Astrakhan would be further south, further to the right there. We probably won't be able to see it very well. We're only clipping the north end of the Caspian Sea. After that, we'll be headed over Uzbekistan. That's the view to the left. And that is view to the right. Okay, we are at the delta. That is the outflow of the Volga River. Well, probably has many names at this point. And that is the Caspian Sea in front of us. Don't know about the shoreline right in front of us. That looks suspiciously uh, sharp edged, doesn't it? I think that's quite right, but uh, some of the other bits to our right look uh, a lot more convincing and natural, but right under us this bit looks quite cut off. Okay, status update. That there is the end of the Caspian Sea. This little part of it anyway. And we are close to the border of Uzbekistan now. We should be crossing into Uzbekistan momentarily. There's this very prominent sort of flat, salt flat kind of thing here. But otherwise everything is looking good, the owl throttle is doing its job, we've got 29,000 pounds of fuel remaining, and we basically consume about 4.5 thousand pounds per hour, 4.4-ish uh, maybe now. View out the window is somewhat more dramatic than the sort of farmland we've seen in earlier parts of the flight. Uh, it's still trying to load some of those textures there apparently. Oh, that is quite a complex right there. I mean, I guess maybe it's oil stuff? I don't know. Okay, we are now over Uzbekistan and... well, the train has a whole lot more spots on it. What can I say? Lots and lots of spots. Not as many connecting connecting lines 
but uh, lots of spots. We can hear the wind outside and we're at 98-99 knots tailwind so we're getting uh, pretty good help. We are 1476 nautical miles away from Warsaw. So yeah, the remnants of the Aral Sea here. Um, I think we can call the thing below us a salt flat. Uh, apparently the ecosystem collapsed because of bobbing. Of course there was a uh, water diversion but uh, drastically higher salinity than seawater so salt is involved. So now we're over farmland here and you can see sort of a cliff-like edge to things as far as the now desert is concerned back there and we're getting closer to the populated areas of, or one cluster of the populated areas of Uzbekistan. There's basically uh, one cluster near Samarkand or basically in sort of an arc from Samarkand. There's also Tashkent uh, further to the east, so I take it back, three clusters. There's the Tashkent area, there's the Samarkand area, and then this is a Nukus area which is the closest to the Aral Sea. Nukus Urgench sort of place. Round the border with Turkmenistan. Do you suppose somehow me making a custom texture made that monitor flicker there? Why is only that part flitter flickering? Just the artificial horizon. Why is only that part flickering? This river that we're sort of following along is the Amu Darya. Daria. Yeah. I wonder if Amu is river. No, Adaria is the river. Uh, Amu is the name of it. So Amu River or Amu River. No, there's more desert now out the left window as we see some of the wing fluttering there the right window is uh, more settled it looks like all right so we are flying over our last little bit of Uzbekistan and we are approaching the border with Afghanistan it only has a small border with Afghanistan but we happen to be crossing right there and the river in front of us is uh, once again the Amu River or the Amu Darya and we've basically been following it all the way down here and the the ATC that we're in contact with is Termez and Termez is right on the border between Uzbekistan and Afghanistan so we're headed towards Termez right now and we do need to make a little bit of a turn here The wind is no longer quite so helpful. It is now a crosswind again. Considering how we're doing on fuel, it might have been possible to avoid at least the war zone between Russia and Ukraine. We probably did have enough fuel to fly south out of Poland and sort of go around the whole business. Yeah, it'll be interesting to really put it to its test as far as range. Of course, we've been helped by the wind for part of it, so can't always count on that, but here we are, not too far away from Amritsar right now. If I measure the distance, we're talking about 533 nautical miles, so maybe an hour or so. The Amu Darya, the Amu River, used to feed the Aral Sea. It's a very big river. We can sort of see uh, Termez right now in front of us. It's a tiny town, but it's got an airport there. We are currently 2,106 nautical miles away from Warsaw, apparently, if that is correct still. That is what that is indicating. I mean, we aren't even through our center tank fuel. 
Okay, there's supposed to be an airport here at Termez. But I sure don't see it. No, they don't have the airport. They have the VOR. Yes, yes. Kabul Center. We are now over Afghanistan. Well, actually we're just short of Afghanistan. We are going to be over Afghanistan. Right when we cross the river. Not the best defined river. Kabul Center, Ray Eyes Romeo, Alpha 412, flight level 390. Oh, uh, we can barely see any sign of a town. And uh, there's sort of a road there. Not road, a runway there. I think I see a runway there. This wasn't rendering it very well. And still isn't really. But yeah, I think I see a runway there. Okay, well, Afghanistan. Well, honestly, this area doesn't look too bad under the circumstances. But I see in the distance there is some white-capped mountains that might not have the best treatment. We'll see. We'll approach some of them, it looks like. And I have to point out that while my display is flickering there, the Copilot display is not. This thing has been flickering the whole time the whole time and that co-pilot display has been just fine is there any way we can switch the two? <laughs> oh well I guess I can have that there uh, then it doesn't flicker why, why is this the only one that flickers? interesting patch of green we have here Well, there is a river right there. Well, mountains over here are looking pretty good. We won't be directly flying over Kabul or anything like that. Well, the snow-capped mountains don't look as bad as I was fearing. In fact, looking pretty good overall. Well, we're past the snow-capped mountains, and in this particular area, things seem to have given up on us. It's, you know, very blocky, obviously generic. Um, over there to the left, we've got some higher detailed mountains, but right over where we are here, it's, uh, did it, like, decide not to load these? I mean, I feel like it decided not to load these, which is not fair, because it loaded all the ones off to the right and off to the left, but not the ones we're directly over. <laughs> but yeah, this seems distinctly horrible. There's not too much more of Afghanistan here. And then we'll be over Pakistan, and then, of course, landing in Amritsar. Right now, we're less than 300 nautical miles away. Okay. I think... Oh. Here we go. We are now on Lahore Center because once we cross that river, we're in Pakistan. There's some unfortunate patches here, as far as the scenery is concerned. You can see the difference between the good side and the bad side right there. PS is Peshawar, which is our next waypoint. Well, we are directly over Peshawar. That's Peshawar Airport right there. Well, the wind's against us now. We've been in flight for just over five hours, which is not bad timing for this particular flight. We have picked up the VOR at Amritsar now, 154 nautical miles away. Well, somewhere on this landscape is a waypoint called Belko, which is the last waypoint until Amritsar. 
Okay, they were asking us to descend a little bit earlier than I was intending to descend, but all right. Thirty-four approach. Okay. Whoa, seven thousand now? Come on, man. Two thousand eight hundred? This this is too quick. Come on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, oh, we've got a rainbow in front of us. Look at that. A nice little welcome rainbow. That uh, might actually be the border with India. That river right there. Nice of India to give us a welcome rainbow. Technically the border doesn't follow the river exactly, it's weird. Okay, well, 12,000. We need to actually descend lower, don't we? They wanted us all the way at 2,800. Reyes Romeo Alpha 412 contact Varanasi Center on 120.75. Good day. Okay, well, we're going a little bit fast there. Going to 120.75. Varanasi Center. Reyes Romeo Alpha 412. Let's see, how are the speed brakes? Well, oh, minor speed breakage. Oh, rain. Oh, do I get to use the wipers? I'm going to use the wipers. I mean, they implemented the wipers. I, I don't know if wipers actually do anything, but you know, it's enough. Reyes Romeo Alpha four one two descent and maintain two thousand five hundred feet. Two thousand five hundred. Descend and maintain two thousand five hundred feet. Reyes Romeo Alpha four one two. Well, okay, it, it's not raining anymore. Oh, now it's started, right when I turned off the windshield wipers. Well, great visibility and everything. Going to 2,500 is lower than I was expecting, but... Cleared view or DME runway, tree 4 approach, Reyes Romeo, Alpha 412. Okay, well, I guess I will proceed. 2500. Yes, 2500 is exactly where they wanted us to be. All the way around. And I looked it up, uh, the runway is 336 actually. Okay. Looks great to me. Well, just waiting clearance to land here. Well, yeah. Okay, well, you don't have to be making so much of a fuss about it. Um, here we go. Reyes Romeo Alpha 412 when calm clear to land runway tree 4. Now you tell me. Clear to land runway tree for Reyes Romeo Alpha 412. Flight slope. Flight slope. 
I'm not entirely sure Light how to slope. interpret that. Light slope. Light slope. Sink rate. Okay, sink rate I understand. Sink rate. Light slope. 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 Okay. Oh, runway, where are you? Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Why are you complaining about glide slope? I, I over overcorrected because of all that. Pull up. Sink rate. <laughs> this is not the glorious smooth approach into Amritsar is hoping for. Fifty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Okay. But we survive. Good thing we don't need a whole lot of... Runway. Okay. Taxing to gate eight using taxiway Bravo cross runway tree for Alpha Reyes Romeo Alpha four one two. You heard him. Oh, there's my flaps. Let's get those up. There's another Spitfire. <laughs> They're everywhere. Okay, and parking brakes. Fuel. Well, the fuel isn't actually that much of a problem. Oh, I think it's because uh, the center tanks are low pressure. Well, that's fine. We'll be going through the checklist to shut things down. Shut down procedure. Parking brake. We have chocks. Uh, let's turn off the wipers. <laughs> uh, that probably won't be in the check. Maybe it will be, maybe it won't. But Okay, FS actions. Ground services. Chocks. Set. Okay, well, I guess we should start the APU. Anyway, we can let them get their bags. Anti-collision switch. We haven't actually shut down the engines. No. Okay, throttles at idle and cut off. Okay, ground power switch on. There we go. Now we're happy. We'll just shut off the APU then. Galley power switch off. Anti-ice. We're off already. Hydraulic pumps on. Electric pumps off. Fuel pumps off. Yes, we rated that. Probe heat off. We did that. Um, you forgot about the window heat. Let's turn that off. Uh, okay, IRS mode selectors off. Emergency exit lights off. Window heat switches, now we turned them off, okay. Air conditioning pack switches, off. Okay, power down checklists. APU or ground power switches, off. Uh, so, we, we are ready to go with that. That is the last thing we do. Okay, fine. Ground power, off. And we'll have battery um, standby power off, is that the way we, well I guess we can go DC off. Okay, so that should, that should do it. Um, why isn't it giving me the, why is it not giving me the end thing? You know, you have finished the flight. 
right? Normally they they do that. I can't. Can I actually communicate? Hi, guys. Romeo Alpha four one two. The jetway is going to be connected. Can it reach? Maybe I should have opened the door. No, no, I can't reach. That's fine. I, I should have opened the door. Maybe that would have ended it. I don't know what the rules are. But anyway, I think we have completed this flight. And yeah, and I'll wrap it up here. Let's uh, check the logbook to see what the timing was. So, main menu. 5 hours and 47 minutes. So, there we have it. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.